Hello, and welcome once again to Lost in Criterion, the show where I, the Adam Glass, and my good friend, John Patrick Owitari Dorgan, talk about the Criterion Collection. I did a good job this time, too. You did a good job this time, too. That's two weeks in a good. row. Congratulations. Uh, let's, you know, let's, let's not rest on our laurels. Let's move on. <laughs> Paul Morrissey's 1973 uh, horror spoof, I guess. Horror, it's, yeah. It's, uh, it's, yeah, uh... it's, it's certainly meant to be a funny movie. It's it's very much a sort of sexploitation horror movie, but it's, it's uh, yeah. Anyway, this one yeah. is... Yeah, uh... sexploitation is definitely one of the words that you could use for it. <laughs> yes. Also, disgustploitation? <clears throat> yes. Is that now, a we're not... We, uh, we could still be describing two different movies at this point, so we need to specify which oh, one. Sorry. Uh, Flesh for Frankenstein. Uh, next episode, we'll be discussing its companion piece, uh, Blood for Dracula. But this time, which I wish they had continued going forever, so it would have been like, <laughs> uh, like you know, I don't know. I, for instance, I, like uh, Kibbles and Bits for Wolfman, and like yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you yeah. know, just kind of goes on forever. Like yeah. uh, <laughs> Moisturizer for Swamp Thing, and. Just keep going. Bandages keep going. for Mummy, man. There is, you know, well, keep on forever. Given that kind of the themes and uh, uh, sort of points of these movies are nearly identical, <laughs> I, th- I think probably there's only so much you can do and still. No, I, I wish it had been the exact same film <laughs> over, the exact same and movie over and over and over. And over. <laughs> because these two are basically, I mean, well, they're, they're very similar, but they're they not. Similar. They're you know, not exactly plot-wise, the same. Plot-wise, there's a lot of different. Between these two, yeah, but the anyway. point is, is that yeah, I think you could have gone on forever and just yeah. done. First, it we were talking about Flesh for Frankenstein. Yes, so so we'll get we'll get into uh, we'll get into the other later. Um, as I said, nineteen seventy three, Paul Morrissey, Paul Morrissey, part of uh, the the Factory Andy Warhol's group in New York, uh, and in that regard, Andy Warhol has an executive producer credit on this, and it is sometimes credited as uh, or marketed as Andy Warhol's Frankenstein. Even though, from what I can figure, from what I've read, didn't really have anything involved with it, just selling his name. Yeah, um, which is that's what I've gotten know, out of it too. Andy Warhol's fine to do that, uh, <laughs> but you know, it's very it's very Warholish in its uh, use of pop culture to to try to say something uh, in a very very bizarre way. Yeah, <laughs> and that's one of the big problems with the film right from the beginning for me is that I never did quite get a hold of what they wanted to say in either of the two films, but especially yeah. with Flesh for Frankenstein, I'm like, what was the point of that? Yeah. Well, like, it felt like a very pointless exercise to me. It's very, it's very weird. Um, because <sighs> yeah, I, uh, you know, the, the extra, the extra material really helps in the Criterion Collection in this one. Um, oh, because so I get, you mean the YouTube yeah. version doesn't have uh, <laughs> that extra information? Yeah, unfortunately, since you watched it on YouTube. No, uh, hey, you know, I gotta do what I gotta actually, do. Actually, it was really weird that this movie was on YouTube. For yeah, me. well, that both I of did, them were on YouTube. Yeah, yeah I didn't was... watch it. I didn't watch it on YouTube, but there is a lot of nudity in this movie. <laughs> yeah, I was um, really surprised about that. I watched it on YouTube, and I was like, "This never got flagged." <laughs> yeah. So you watch. I guess it like somebody can make it, like right? it's art. It's got Andy Warhol's name on it. Yeah, yeah, probably. So. Um, so and this Andy is... Warhol presents Debbie Does Dallas. I don't know. It's <laughs> sort of do anything. Just put that it way, on there. Andy Warhol's porno. I mean, is 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 blowjob on there? Do we have like his explicitly uh, sexual things? Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. You know, but anyway. Uh, this movie, interesting enough, co-written by uh, the same guy who wrote Fellini's Amacord, uh, which we watched a while really? back. Really? Yeah. Um, which, yeah, it's 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 that really weird sense. that that's a thing that, that that is true about this. But I um, can deal with that. I really can. Famous, like I can see yeah, that now that I know. Famous that. name attachments hit an absurd degree in Blood for Dracula, and we'll get we'll get into that. Let's not. Yeah, we're, that's later. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, the co and the the writer of Amacord uh, co-wrote this, and and you can kind of feel it actually in a couple of yeah, scenes. you can, yeah, yeah. I totally really understand is. now that you said that. I was like, yeah. oh, well, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. 
Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Uh, this movie, um, I, I, I have to say, just to start off, the cinematography of this movie and the set design, uh, the way they shoot, like, in the lab and in the dining room and a couple of other places is amazing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I agree. I do. Yeah. Um, at the same time, I think kind of the, the actual film itself unfortunately ruins that. <laughs> I mean, because it's like having a really beautiful f- picture of a toilet or something. Yes. I, yes. Like the the yes, the cinematography is lovely. It, like the framing, and everything is very well done. Although my YouTube copy is not that great, like the quality, but yeah, I uh, think so I, I, I started to watch that like YouTube one for a little bit. Uh, I, I fortunately found this at the library uh, because because Columbus Columbus is a very cosmopolitan city. <laughs> well, I tried to you know I'm I'm trying to keep everything on the level, and it, yeah. it was available on YouTube. I didn't get any. Obviously, since yeah. it's still there, somehow it must be fairly legal for it to be there. Yeah. Well. As far because well, I mean YouTube's pretty active about that kind of stuff. Yeah, so yeah. I mean it's it's been on there from what I can see for a while. Yeah. And it's not been taken down, so obviously somebody thought it was okay. Yeah. And and you know, I found that link for you and I found it very yeah. easily. So it's not like it's Yeah, you just type in the name of the film and then ta da. Yeah. So um you yeah. know, if you're having trouble finding the film, stop listening <laughs> now. Go type into YouTube, flash for Frankenstein. Yeah. Um, enjoy it. Yeah, it it, it I don't know. It's like, I guess it's supposed to be satire or a um, yeah. spoof, but I kind of hated it. Not <laughs> I under- super I hated understand. it, just kind of hated it. I understand. I understand that that response to this. And it's weird. Uh, Paul Morrissey, um, and you know, it being 1973 and him working for Andy Warhol, this is this is especially weird. But Paul Morrissey really hated the sort of free love mentality of the world. Um, and and this movie and, and Blood for Blood for Dracula both uh, are kind of meant to show negative ramifications of everyone just everything being about sex. Okay. Um, and and in that regard, you know, we have the one character who isn't interested in sex has his life completely ruined because he's killed and turned into a zombie. Um, the guy who wanted to become <laughs> a, uh, a monk or whatever. A monk. Whereas his, his friend, um, that actor who, who I hate in both of these movies. Yes. My lord, he is... Ah, man. And it's that um, it's the writing, but also his acting. God. Yeah, Joe, uh, Joe something or other. Uh, but Joe anyway. American is what he really... Com- it really yeah, comes off as like... I hated that man, and like, yeah. you just want him to be gone. Yeah, yeah. D'Alessandro. D'Alessandro, yeah, Joe D'Alessandro, and uh, he, uh, he's a, I don't the know, the worst there's... actor to ever live. <laughs> there there are stories within the factory with, with different biographies that I've, I've come across that just call him a complete idiot, and... and Watching him here, that might be true. But. Yeah, and it's really weird because you've got like, um, I really actually enjoyed watching Udo Kier, I guess is how, I don't know how to pronounce yeah, his name. Yeah, the, uh, the actor who plays Frankenstein here and plays Dracula in the next yeah, movie. Yeah, I really liked him. Yeah. He's well, absurd he's, he's, in this film, but he's, he's absurd and absurd. he's campy and he, he's fun in what he does. And, you know, he's got that thick accent, which... Yeah. <laughs> almost, almost sounds fake. I actually watched Blood for Dracula first, and I, I thought it was like a put on, and, and then I watched Fle- Fre- and Flesh like, no, for Frankenstein. That's just how he talks. It's like no, that's just how he talks. <laughs> yeah, it, I love it. It's perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, like his but, intonation's so weird, and it's oh, yeah. it's, it's like it makes him sound like a crazy monster yeah. movie guy, and it's great. I love him. But then you compare him to like Joe, whatever Joe Delisandro yeah. or whatever, yeah. and his like New Yorky. I I may or may not yeah. be able to count. <laughs> yes, like the way he, he talks makes him sound like it's a moron. Everything everything's incredibly melodramatic with the way he talks because he doesn't really have an ability to intonate his voice. Yeah, um. and then like and 
And in Flesh for Frankenstein, he's so... It, it's worse than Blood for Dracula. We, it's almost yeah. as though we should just be discussing both movies at the same time, but that weird sort of rapiness about him. Yeah, yeah. Now, in this in this movie, in, in Blood for Dracula, it... it it's, it's real bad. But in yeah, this it's movie, it's there, in this too. Movie, like, it's... Yeah. And in this movie, he's just kind of... He's he's kind of a libertine in his in his views of things. And, you know, everybody everybody really is. And that's, that's one, one thing that sells this as an anti-free love movie is that everybody's a result everything that happened is a result of an obsession with sex and and you know to, not to the extent of sallow obviously no um nothing but, ever 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 yeah. reached that but you know frankenstein and his wife are brother and sister and know? that's weird um, and it took me a little while to understand that because yeah, it got confusing yeah, yeah there's the one I, scene which, which by the way i want to bring something up just a little pet peeve does she not have uh, eyebrows <laughs> no, I don't think she does. Because <laughs> it makes her look like a uh, like a like some sort of cro magnon man at times. Yeah, yeah. it really freaked bit. me out a couple times you know, when I was watching it. Frank, Frankenstein um, has you know, a lot of eyebrows. He has a lot of eyebrows. <laughs> she has none. Udo Udo's got ton of, he he's got he's, enough eyebrows to make up for. Everyone. He's got eyebrows for days. Yeah, um, but yeah, there's that there's that one there's that one scene of them having dinner, and and I love. There's there's a built-in absurdity to long dining room scenes like that where there's only two people talking I, I and love they're those sitting kind of they're sitting at they're sitting at opposite ends of of the table, um, <clears throat> but yeah the first scene where we have that they're talking about uh, their parents and and it's still you know it's just it's it takes a little bit to find out that you know when they're both when they say mother they're both talking about well, the same woman and I was um, it, when I was watching it I was processing it in the way that you would kind of. You see yeah, where, in films sometimes where like a married couple will refer to one yes. of their or both of it as mother. Yes, and, exactly. And so I exactly. did, I didn't process it as them being brother and sister until he literally outright said it yeah. and called her yeah. sister, and I was like, oh, yeah. Ew. You know, there there are moments a little bit earlier than that where where you know I think she gets she says something essentially father likes you better or something. Like yeah, that. and but, I heard that, and I just didn't. I, I processed yeah. it, but I couldn't process it because. Yeah, I was like, because oh, because why weird. should you? I yeah, mean, why this you... is yeah not something that makes sense. But this movie but doesn't yeah. make sense, so it's okay. So they're products of their own their own parents' libertarian or libertineness. Um, <laughs> 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 um, anyway, uh, after you accused me of of just hating rich people when we talked about <laughs> high and low, I'm going to. <laughs> but, did I accuse you of hating rich people? I, oh, I think, yeah, you, I did, I think because... you you stepped up to, to just saying I want all rich people dead. And... Well, to be fair, I do too. But come on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anyway, um, so so we have that. We have uh, we have Delisancho's character is just this free love sort of. Oh, I uh, hate him so much. And, but and he's he not goes, free and, love. And actually... He's he's not, and that's what yeah. I think throws that off is because he doesn't give off a like. Hippy dippy free love no, vibe. No. He gives off a guy who pays women for sex vibe. Yeah. It's different. The, like, the guy who just really, really wants sex. Yeah, um, like he's he comes off more as a perv than he does as a uh, yeah, yeah, as a free love. Yeah, that's type. that's true. That's and that is and maybe true. that and wasn't the idea. Maybe that was part, a mistake one, of actor yeah. choice. But I think that's one thing where Morrissey's uh, Morrissey's sort of uh, motifs here uh, and his, his themes fall apart in that you know if it's if it's a critique of the sexualization of of america as as per the free love movement of the hippies it kind of falls apart yeah but, it but if it's a if it's a critique of the general over sexualization of western culture <coughs> you know, maybe maybe we can still sorry maybe we can still hold on to that and, it's and in that regard yeah in that regard you know that's the only good character is ruined because Frankenstein thinks that he is Delosandros. He has Delosandros libido. <laughs> and you right. know, that ends up that ends up with the rest of the plot being, you know, after after the guy with absolutely no the asexual guy uh ends up in the uh, sex monster. Um things uh, <laughs> things don't go well for anyone. It's so an absurd story. <laughs> Yes. And then, like, yes. Udo Kier's character, Franken... Well, Frank, I should say Frankenstein. Yeah. Um, sorry. I just... I like 
Udo Kier enough that like yeah. I like to talk about him. <laughs> he's, he's a funny guy. Yeah, I really, I really like I wanna, him. I want to so, see. I want to seek him out in different. Yeah, in me different too. I was now. like, wow, I like this guy. And um, but no, so Frankenstein motivation is so weirdly Naziistic, so <laughs> yes. eugenics, but like really Absolutely. screwed up eugenics because whoever wants to use dead people. Yeah, but also because whoever's <laughs> balls he stole are, is who he's going to get. Like, he's not getting, like... Yeah. Which I guess makes sense because <laughs> in the context of the time this is supposed to be taking place, the understanding of genetics was limited at best. Um, yeah. But um, at the same time, the man reanimates a set of lungs and heart but can't figure out that the balls might have something to do with it. <laughs> to be fair, the the uh, the lungs and heart are one of my favorite things in the movie. Yes, me too. Uh, in fact, they look of the... so great. Yeah, um, I like those. Um, I like the fact that apparently, according to this film, all science is basically <laughs> kitchen level chemistry. Yes. Put it in a pot, mix it around a little bit, and ta da! Well, that's you know. But no, that's how but, works. but it is, but. <laughs> Even in your no, crappiest Frankenstein films, you get the appearance of somebody doing some science. Yeah, even, and there's always even there's in always... young freaking Frankenstein, you got lightning, at least, yeah. which has this sort well, of that's... mystical property about it. Here, all we've got yeah, is exactly. like throw the switches and mix that shit up, and ta da! Yeah. Like, well, he one, might as well been a magician. Was... He could have pulled a he one... could have pulled a Frankenstein monster yeah. out of his hat instead. It would have been the same well, thing. That's... That's one thing that traditional Frankenstein movies rely on. You know, we don't have that lightning mysticism here. And that's that's another thing. Even back to the original Frankenstein story, you know, lightning is this mysterious force we don't really understand. So it has magical properties. Right. And it, is what, it is what causes all of this to, to work. And we don't have that here. Right. We and, have no and, reason you know, why this works in this way. Yeah. He's like, which, which I've is, done it. I've solved the problem. It's like, but there was never a situation where you didn't have the answer. You yeah. mix it up but in a jar and yeah. it was finished. Exactly, exactly. Um, and and he's just it, it's weird because he's within his realm. Uh, he seems to know that his wife's having an affair and doesn't care because yes. she's also his sister. Um, but he has really, really uh, the, sexualized innards. It's weird. Too. Yeah, and then he transfers that over to his uh, assistant in a really weird way. Yes. And so, yes. yeah, it's weird. I don't... That's the part where the movie kind of is... <laughs> can, like, because it's... At oh, that point, it's like that whole, like, free love... That's the it's point. It's like, yeah. what? But that's the point where it's so over the top. Yeah. That it's just... It's weird and it's wonderful, but when he's like when he's like having sex with with the female corpse, uh, but he's not actually having sex with her. He's he's humping the hole he's cut in her stomach. Yeah, and he's he turns he turns to his assistant when he's done, and says, "and and forgive me for the curses, uh, to no death, Otto. You have to fuck the gallbladder, fuck life in the gallbladder, rather." Yeah. Um. That is not what a gallbladder is for. And and um, also, there's no way that's not getting like turning into the most disgustingly festering wound ever. Like, even if you have the yes. ability to animate, reanimate life, I don't think you have the ability to uh, stop yeah. that from becoming an infection. Yeah, um, that that line apparently um, is supposed to be, and and I wouldn't have known this without being told because I am not this intimately familiar with uh, Marlon Brando's work. Uh, but I guess it's supposed to be a parody of the last Tango in Paris line, uh, where Brando says, you know, to be able to feel free of that feeling of being alone until you look death right in the face, until you go right up into the ass of death, right up his ass, till you find a womb of fear. <laughs> Which is itself such an over-the-top, yeah, ridiculous line for Marlon Brando. I don't know deliver. how I feel about that in general either. Um <laughs> But I yeah, and this 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 certainly this this condenses that into even you know and more Fuck life in the gallbladder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I yeah. don't know that this this oh man this film. I tell you, I just I'm at a loss for words. Yeah, because like uh, let me I'm gonna give you some a little bit of an anecdote. So I'm watching this film while my wife and son are taking a nap. Okay, <laughs> okay. like three o'clock yeah. in the afternoon or something like that. 
it's a it's when they're not around it's a good time to watch yes movie, definitely which by the way i really wish the criterion collection featured a few films that i could watch while they were awake <laughs> um just a couple hey time bandits is coming uh, out. yeah right actually that he might enjoy that um but like so i'm watching it right and my wife comes down i'm using my wife because i don't want to use her name on the podcast um okay comes down at the last freaking 15 minutes of this film and she's like oh no what? she just like loses she's like this is the most disgusting thing i've ever seen in my entire life and i'm like yep it's just it's gross but it's also hilariously bad is what I told her. Yes. Because, like, yes. I, I, I just want to talk about the ending. Because that's really, for me, all I need to talk about for this film. Yeah. Okay. So we have a... was possibly... I don't know what organ it is. Because it's very unidentified. <laughs> it's on a stick. Um, We have just innards everywhere. Yeah. It's just, well, I think it's supposed to be his heart. I think his heart is supposed to be impaled on the stick. So his... But it um, went through his stomach. But it went through his stomach. And also, yeah, it looks that's... nothing like a heart. <laughs> No, the fake heart they have under the counter looks more like a heart. Yeah, than that heart. and that's just a ball of rubber. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Yes. So. Um. Yeah. She comes eat. down there in that, and I was like, she's just. Like, she gave me this look, and I'm like, there's nothing. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. I didn't make the film. I'm not the the lunatic who decided to put this to film. <laughs> Pat, I'm very sorry if my idea to watch all of the Criterion Collection leads to your divorce. And, <laughs> yeah, I don't think it'll get that far, but it was like I was like so embarrassed to be watching it. I was like, I don't know, I, know. I don't know why this is on film because like it didn't even make sense. It was so unnecessary. She came well, down right when his hand was cut off. There's there's points. There's point unnecessary points in this movie that are unnecessary because this was originally released in 3D. Oh, okay. Um, so like the the pole coming through his stomach and and with his with his heart right on. See, I feel like this is you know? why Americans are going to regret later that we put so many movies in 3D right now. <laughs> yes, because every time you do it, you just do stupid shit that you don't need to do, yeah. and then like later when it's you're watching it not in 3D, later. you're like, hmm. Huh? But even then, this was stupid. Even in 3D, it would have been yeah. stupid. Like, like it's weird because like I really enjoyed watching uh, Udo, uh, Udo Kide. I can't say his name. Udo Kier. Yeah, Udo. That was very yeah. enjoyable. But that was it for me. That was the only enjoyable part of the film. And then the ending with the kids and the scalpels. I was like, where's this headed? He could just kick her in the face. I don't that is true, I don't, but he uh, but he doesn't. I think I think the point of the ending is the sort of uh, it's uh, you know the degradation of the future generation. Yeah, um, but we get, okay. Well, but yeah, but at the same time, like I don't know. It just kind of feels like the writer didn't know what point he wanted to make, and so he just sort of yeah. like threw a bunch of stuff at the wall and s- tried to see what stuck. Because, like, that doesn't feel like it's part of the same over-sexualization theme. That feels more of, like, a, you know, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree sort of theme. And I don't know. I'm just um, saying. And those I, kids. Whatever. I, I want to point out real quick that I just looked up Udo Kier. Yeah. And uh, he's actually in Armageddon. Uh, he's the uh, He's the psychoanalyst. I don't remember his character at all uh, from the one time I've seen Armageddon. But I, I guess he's a he's a NASA, a NASA like psychoanalyst who's who want, who has to do a a, a set with the with the guys uh, before they go. I have up. a new theory, Adam. The entire Criterion yeah. Collection is based off of like a seven <laughs> degrees of Kevin Bacon sort of thing, but with Udo Kier. Perhaps, I'm okay perhaps. With I, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> but yeah. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. He's 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 a delightful guy. Yeah, and um, about the only redeeming element of this film, as far as I'm concerned, it. I'm not saying yeah. it's bad. Like I didn't hate it. It's not. We're not even at a Beauty and the Beast level hate. Okay, it's just. I didn't find a lot of <laughs> redeeming qualities in it. Yeah, it no, felt I, kind I of certainly like I agree. wasted an hour or you know an hour and a half of my life, and then ended it there's, with a lot of stuff a lot that of... made me kind of want to throw up. There's a lot of ridiculousness in this movie, and and the gore is certainly over the top. Uh, and I can understand why this movie would be a sort of cult classic, even even right out of the gate. Um, yeah. 
And because people who say things are called classic like crap. Yeah. <laughs> Not always, hey, but Pat, like, this is I'll, one of them. I'll, re- I'll remind you that any anyone who finds anything redeeming in our favorite <laughs> Hudson movie. Hudson Hawk. Hudson Hawk. Or top secret. Uh, finds <laughs> it redeeming because they call it a cult classic. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> no, okay. No, I do understand. Like, why people... <laughs> But, you know, that happens, but this is one of those ones where it yeah. feels like people like it because people like crap sometimes. Yes. Yeah. No, no, this is this is very much an absurd movie. And and it's 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 absurd to a point where it doesn't necessarily work for yeah, me. Yeah, like I mean I guess um, some people really like that they, they they buy into the absurdity thing and so like the more absurd the yeah. better. But for me it was too much. It was like Yeah. I didn't. It didn't I mean, feel rewarding. Yeah, yeah. No, certainly. Um, and the the funny bits of this movie are are funny because they're over the top. And and to that regard, you can't really call it a comedy. Um, yeah, which I mean, is obviously kind of what they did it that was stuff on as, as far as like what I've read. On yeah, it. it's like oh, it's a comedy. Yeah, and it's like well, no, because there aren't really any jokes. <sighs> Yeah. There's just a really there's no, funny there's no actor. jokes in any sort of traditional <laughs> sense. Yeah, it was, it was a great act. Yeah, and, and there's you know there's certainly yeah. there's certainly weird things that happen. Yes, and not necessarily weird in a surreal instance though. The when the the maid or whatever loses her innards because Otto tried to seduce her and then like punched her in the stomach and she just exploded. Right. Or yeah. Like he it, it, apparently it was a he weird thing. His, the best way. <laughs> uh, yeah. Which, by the way, I do yeah. not think is possible. No, because <laughs> you have a lot no, of muscular t- tissue there. I do not think you can do that. No, I don't. I don't. I don't think, think you can don't pull think a, a realistic um, portrayal. What is it? Um, um was it um, Temple of Doom? Sort of like a Godima <laughs> thing, and like nah, nah, I don't. He does that, no, and I don't no, think that's don't. possible. <laughs> no, Pat. I I I think I would have to agree with you there. Well, no, but that I mean, that's uh, what makes it so weird. I mean, it's part of what makes it weird. Other than yeah. the fact that we have to stare at her innards while she lays on a grate for, like, <laughs> probably yes. one of the longest scenes of the film, where she's just laying there. It's yes. like, oh, why are we watching this? One though? of the longest cuts. One of the longest cuts. It's certainly that. And, and, and like, uh, I just don't yeah. understand. It's like, he gets this idea, but then this idea is not even really <clears throat> very possible, unless he's, yeah. like, freaking Bruce Lee and has hands of steel. Yeah. Um... As far as as far as the absurdity is comedy, I think I liked Blood for Dracula better. Yes, and, and we'll and get we, into that. Obviously, we'll get into that. I, I yeah, um, of the two, I prefer that film, but we'll get into that when yeah. we get to that. So, um, but yeah, this movie, this that? movie, <laughs> we need to find something. Right, else to we've say got like twenty hour. more minutes, so <laughs> I really just don't have much to say about this film. No, um, I don't remember the music except for like I guess it's considered pretty good music from what I've read. It, it was uh, yeah, very I, I, thematic. I, yeah, the music's very thematic, but it didn't really it didn't really affect me. I'm no done. It wasn't I'm, memorable. I'm, I'm emotionless. It works. I'm a husky man. It works. Man. It works. Um, but it works. It works well enough that it it was neither extra good or extra right. Bad it just feels like memory. part of it. Um, yeah, I do not like there. the fact that um, in both films, for some reason, they think still frames are a good idea. <laughs> but they're not they're not as bad as the still frames in say Alphaville. At the, That's true. At the very end. I was saying that like that is... in both of the films, but this one even more noticeable. Like we do this thing where like they show the kids with the knives and then like the music's playing and then it freeze frames and then it's like roll credits. It's like Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Just go to black. Well, please. you know. <laughs> Well, it's like it's like the ending to a sitcom of the era. It's yeah, just, which makes it so you seem so cheap. Know. Well, well, in this movie, I think there's a weird mother, father, two kids sitcominess about their family. Yes, that's true. you know he he leaves her work. She feels neglected. Um, you know, even though his work is downstairs in the lab, um, and then the kids are just kind of left to their own devices because the parents aren't paying attention to them. Because one's too busy having sex and the other's too busy trying to design monsters to have sex. Right. And I guess that's where you get into the fact that, like, about the the over-sex thing. Like, everybody is kind of obsessed with sex, but so trans... Like, 
Not directly. Yeah. So... I actually, I really expected there to be a scene to suggest that the kids were, like, sexualizing in the same way. Mm. Um, and, and you know, we've got... The very end suggests that they might continue the experiments, but but it doesn't suggest... That. I think it suggests that they're going to get thankful. a boot to the face. Because yeah, he's, like, I'm, I'm, two I'm thank- inches off the ground. Yeah, he's still... He's still good. He could still do that. Too. I mean, they're children with knives. That's not the most threatening thing in the world. Yeah. But yeah, I, it's it's weird that at the end of the movie, there's only like three people alive. Yeah, <laughs> that's, right? That's it feels for like, a comedy. It's, in that way, it's more like a... a it's more like a... Uh, yeah. oh, I'm blanking on names. Um, it feels more like some of the other films we've watched, like a... Uh, Oh come on, a John Woo film or something like that. Oh, everybody yeah. dies. John Woo. Everybody, everybody's just dead at the end. Of Which show. I like how that the, the nice thing, the only one of the enjoyable parts about that was the fact that they all formed a pile on the floor. Basically, it's like here's the dead <laughs> people pile. Everybody was just there in the, in the last scene. No one, no one's removed. Everybody like comes in and dies. Yeah, and right. That's just how that. And it's it's very I mean, play like. Only like two. Yeah. Everything takes no, that's, place in this that's cer- final room where everybody just comes in and dies. Something certainly true that I really I really liked about the way everything in the lab was shot is that it feels, you know, it feels very play-like because it's just this really wide area that we only shoot from one angle. And yeah, and but yeah, I liked it too, <laughs> but I always get a little bit uncomfortable about the play style shooting. Of a film when yeah. I'm never when yeah. I'm not sure if it was done on purpose or because somebody was not very good at their job. <laughs> yeah, for for instance, in High and Low, it's very much uh, on purpose. The openings, it's very yeah, very clearly on purpose because they're using they're using classical staging. Yeah. They're, they're <laughs> You've got the people who like suddenly get switched off when yeah. it's not their turn to talk. But like, yeah. Whereas, I guess I'm not yeah. sure. In this movie, I'm not sure if yeah. like somebody was like, eh, we'll just shoot it from this angle. It it at this it, yeah. it sometimes feels a little bit phoned in that way. Okay, okay. I'm not sure. No, I, I don't I, know. Can, I, I don't know the director. I can agree I with you to an extent there. No, the cinematography. I feel, yeah, the cinematography for the rest of the movie, I think, feels purposeful mm. to me enough that I think I I think there were choices being made. But the rest of the staging um, in the rest of the film is not that. Yeah, it's also not theater stage. style, it's not, so it's, it's not confusing. Theater style, I don't so. know if it's just because they didn't know how to deal yeah. with such a big room, because all the other staging yeah. is very um, claustrophobic. You know, like I mean, like every other room is relatively small. Things yeah, take all, place uh, in a relatively small room. At least very room. close. And then all of a sudden they have this with big the, room, and it's like, oh, what do we do with it? Yeah. Oh, we'll shoot it the same way we shoot the small rooms. Well, that doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. I guess, uh, no, I, guess, I don't know. Uh, with I, with the design. exception of the dining room, I think. I th- I think that criticism holds because the dining room obviously they shoot it they shoot it small but they shoot it small on purpose because they shoot it for the absurdity right of that's going supposed to be a joke across that table that's the, like the yeah, oldest a, joke ever ever yeah, told on yeah. film I mean that is that is a joke that is used in any comedy with a long dining room table um, which I've always but, wanted to do a sitcom yeah. on like broadcast TV that features a normal life with normal people but a really <laughs> absurdly long table. Ah, Let me see. our dining room table yeah. Tuesday. Right, Sunday. exactly. It totally fits with the ABC <laughs> lineup. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but Martha, it came <laughs> with the house. We have to use it. <laughs> this it's place easy. is a rental. I can't just throw away the furniture. There you go. It's true. It writes itself. <laughs> it writes itself. It writes itself incredibly poorly, <laughs> but, Pat, but, is, but it writes but itself. Come on, man! This is a, this is the era of Big Bane theory and things like that. Okay, <laughs> throw in a laugh track, people will laugh. Hey, hey, there is there is good comedy on television right now. We are we have moved past, uh, according to Jim. Okay, I'll give you that. Not very far past. We are according to Jim, we are, we moved past yes, because time Jim. moves forward and not backwards. Yes. <laughs> We are no yes. longer at according to Jim time. Man, talk about a rabbit hole we just went down. Like this, where are we? What's going on? I would, I would like to see the, uh, the flesh for Frankenstein inspired episode of According to Jim. <laughs> Actually, uh, I would like to see a flesh for Frankenstein inspired episode of pretty much any sitcom, just because yeah, it's it, it really does have a sitcommy feel. It's really weird. 
Yeah. And like, but I don't no, think I that's think on really purpose does. either. I think that has to do with the way it's shot. Uh, I forget. Maybe. I always get them confused, but there's like two different ways you can shoot a TV show. You can shoot it with multi-camera single, or single, single camera. camera or three camera. And then yeah. single camera or multi-camera. And I feel like because movies don't use the type that they use for sitcoms, this feels like a yeah. sitcom because they use the sitcom sort of cinematography style. Yeah. And that's this. Yeah, this has this has a really single camera. And I don't think that's on purpose. That a lot of sitcoms are shot in now. I yeah. don't know that that's on purpose. I think that's a budget thing. <laughs> I it think might that's be. that we have it one camera. Um, well, at the same time, at the same time, you have to compare that to say to say Blood for Dracula, since they were they were shot at the right. same time, and it doesn't necessarily have that same. Well, yeah, feel but if you got a lot of practice in the first one, maybe, they weren't shot maybe. simultaneously. They were shot back to back. Yeah. Maybe like Flesh for Frankenstein yeah. is our warm up. Maybe. As they're getting Maybe. a feel for like how to shoot with a single camera a film. Because films with a single camera don't look like sitcoms usually. Because no. you 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 have actors do the same lines over and over again and you go in for different shots. You know what I mean? Like a single camera on a on a, on a movie doesn't have to look like a single camera sitcom. But this one does. So, I don't know. I'm just saying, Flesh for Frankenstein yeah. is a warm-up. Maybe you're I don't right. know. Maybe you're or maybe right. they just, you know, just liked it that way. Well, I really I really do feel Blood for Jack Lewis executed. Yeah, it is. So, and that, that's know, weird. Yeah. So considering there's... Yeah. N- should be no reason for that. Yeah, and there's a lot more going on in this movie than in Blood for, Blood for Dracula, I think. Um... Hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to talk about Blood for Dracula, but, but we're not there yet. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, these two being back uh, to back was so, kind of hard to deal with in that. Like, it's yeah, like, th- man, did you just want wanna... us to watch them at the same time on, like, two TVs? Yeah, maybe. That would be interesting. That would be an yeah. interesting experiment, too. No, but I think I think that's kind of one of the problems with our format about talking about each movie individually. We kind of struggled, you know, Donovan being there helped, but we kind of struggled to do three hours with the Samurai Trilogy, for instance. Yeah, but... And they're all very related movies. But there's, there's um, enough ones that are with, absurdly not related in a row that, like, we can't... Yeah. Do, I mean, like, I don't think... The, I don't think the, the, the choice of Armageddon for whatever number 45 is thematically appropriate. <laughs> like, they're like, oh, these are maybe, shitty maybe. space movies in this section. Like, <laughs> like, I don't think that's a thing, right? So... I don't know. Maybe that's we maybe should that's go, the we decisions should go look, they yeah. make. Um, except that Armageddon's immediately followed by Henry the Fifth, Lawrence Olivier's nineteen forty four version, and that's that's not that's not a space movie. Yeah, so there you go. Uh, but you know, Armageddon does have a lot of a lot of Shakespearean, right? Elements. Like uh, um, animal crackers on bellies. <laughs> yes, it's a major and, uh, Shakespearean soundtracks element. by. Uh, yes, soundtracks by by. <laughs> Aerosmith, don't make me start sure. singing Shakespearean thing <laughs> there'll be plenty of time for that when we actually discuss that oh, movie God, that's okay. uh, um, so, yeah so Flash for Frankenstein anyway. I'm, I'm, what do you think just tell me do you like it or not I I'm kind of into because you it had enough sh- oh, sorry go ahead because I was oh because you I think we've acknowledged at this point are more accepting of the horror genre than I am. Yes. I don't like it yeah. at all. Okay. And so I'm always a little, well, I don't little, consider well, I this, know, but it is it because it's a spoof of a horror yeah. genre. So it, it counts. I very, I, mean, I think, I guess it counts. There's, there's very, very few times where horror spoofs are just as good as straight horror movies. And, and you know, the screen franchise tried that and they, they fell apart later. Uh, Josh Whedon's, uh, uh, was it Joss Whedon? Uh, Cabin in the Woods came no, out know, a couple of months ago. I have not seen that, but I've heard very good things about it, and I've heard, and it doesn't it doesn't necessarily spoof um, horror movies, except for disparate ideas being put together. Um, I maybe I'll watch that today. Anyway, but uh, but uh, you know, it happens, but generally. You know, horror movie spoofs along this end of things are more like scary movie, and I don't really consider scary movie to be at all a scary movie in any, well, right, in any right. sense but of the like word. The reason I point out that is just because 
for me, like reviewing yeah. a, or talking about a spoof of a horror film is kind of like, I don't know, like cats talking about, yeah, you know how uh, ducks work. Or yeah, something. you don't, don't, you don't, you don't have the basis. Right, like, for I don't the spoof, watch horror, so films. you don't necessarily. I know generally the tropes yeah. that are involved in horror films because I have seen a few. I do not generally like them. Yeah, and so I also have trouble dealing with like just unnecessary gore or things that I because like I'm the kind of person who still turns yeah. away from that doesn't watch that because like when I saw <laughs> yes. guts flying around in this film I was like Ugh. I started I started like you know folding the towels because <laughs> I don't want to deal with to... it like it's not a thing I enjoy and like so I I, I I defer to your judgment a little bit on that just because you know I don't have any basis like what did you think? You're, yeah. You said you're indifferent. I kind of hate it. So I don't think. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, think I, don't I don't hate yeah. this movie. Where where it tries to spoof in in the violence and the gore, uh, it does weird things. Yeah, but uh, but you know, it's not. It just kind of exists, yeah. and and you know when I when I first when I first saw these movies and I first started looking at what they were, I really thought that they were just you know sex exploitation. But the thing is, I would much movies. rather and watch a sex exploitation like, like yeah, black <laughs> like film than this like black <laughs> blackula yeah. or something like that. Um, you know, they're just kind of it's it's a weird era, and you know the fact that they're trying to kind of spoof that. Okay. But they, if you're spoofing something that on its surface is already ridiculous, low budget, dumb, ridiculous, right, right, like, nothing. Like for example, let's let's talk about because this is very much has sex sexploita- exploitation elements to it, uh, for sure. Yeah, in a weird way. Yeah. Um, but like let's say we're talking about Russ Meyer films, okay? They are already ridiculous. Yeah. When you spoof a thing that yes. is ridiculous, you just waste time. Like, but we see that we see that all the time with those like scary movie franchises because they made all those other ones like date movie and all that stuff, right? Those are parodies yeah. of things, spoofs of things that already are ridiculous on their own. So you're just, you you haven't added anything to the conversation when you spoof something yeah. that is like if you want a really good parody of a horror movie, go watch Young Frankenstein. You will laugh. Yeah. You will think, "Wow, somebody did an excellent job." With this film, this but like when you have yeah. those two to compare, they're even covering basically the same topic, which is Frankenstein, the 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 horror movie interpretation of Frankenstein, the, the actual Frankenstein, right? You, yeah, that's a horror, that's already such a better film, and one of yeah. my favorites. No, Watching this no. is like, like who half-assed this? Is what it feels like to me. Well, yeah, the com- the comedy of Young Frankenstein is certainly better than the comedy yeah. of this movie. No, um, Young Frankenstein and, you had know, Udo Kier, greatest movie ever. <laughs> I don't know because he couldn't replace Gene. No, Walker. no, but he could have been um, like um, some adjunct character. I'm sure yeah. they could have found a place for him. But L- listen to his accent, for God's sake. <laughs> so he he would have. They could have slid man. him into that movie, and nobody would even notice. All right, all right. I think we've rambled oh, enough. Yeah. Uh, oh, but what I want to say... Neither of us really like this thing, movie. Okay, ...about this that I never got around to. This is... Yeah. This movie does a rare thing. It makes nipples kind of yeah. disgusting. <laughs> Which shouldn't be possible. Okay. No, yeah. because they'll, it's like nipple plus horrific-looking scar. Tra- like, juxtaposed on each other. I'm just saying. Yes. I was really yes. disappointed about that. Yeah, I, I, I really found his his dressing of wounds to leave something. Back. Right, right. Uh, like it's like it's like uh, you don't know what you're doing, do you? Yeah, and the extended scene where he's cutting open the, uh, and it's just like hemorrhaging yeah. blood as he cuts the as he cuts the stitches. Um, yeah, it was you know. It was weird. It was yeah, bad. and 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 I found it. Was, it, it was really not kind fun. Of put me off bad. nipples for at least a couple hours. Yeah. yeah, it was it was off-putting bad, not not yeah, fun Yeah, exactly. Bad. And you know, and I think that's mostly what I would say about this here. film. It's not fun bad. It's kind of yeah. off-putting bad. So there you go. Yeah, and and that's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, one thing one thing I will say, uh, Udo's Udo's uh, uh, accent really reminded me of the room. Okay, let me see. 
and that's a movie that's very bad. I've never bad. seen it, so. But oh, it's 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 legitimately terrible, um, and not not on purpose. This movie this movie kind of shoots for a purposely bad, and and usually when something shoots for purposely bad, I'm off put anyway. But uh, but the room is just bad, bad. Um, if it's done well, it can be it can be good. Um, but yeah, this this I don't think's done that no. well. Which is weird because I kind of think Blood for Dracula is yeah, done well. Yeah, we'll get to that. And I uh, would agree with you. So yeah, let's. That's the next episode. Let's talk about that in a little bit and uh, join us for a conversation later. Pat and I are going to talk about them back to back. Hey, 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 this is don't don't. This, that's too inside baseball. They don't oh, even know what, know what's going on. I'm sorry. We oh, do man. these. I, I pulled week. the curtain away. I pulled the curtain away, and I'm sorry. Um, no, Pat, we've already yeah, dealt with right, because somebody's decided to talk about Prometheus. We've, <laughs> we've made reference to got yeah, election um, news and stuff. Oh man, we're terrible at this. <laughs> All right, so. We are so bad at pretending that we're doing these live. Yeah. So, um, join yeah. us next week as we live talk about <laughs> yeah. uh, Blood for Dracula. Yeah, and, uh, yeah we'll see, see you. Thanks we'll for see tuning you in. Thanks for listening. Listening to Lost and Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Oatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via Lost and Criterion at WithTwoBrains.com or join us on the web at www.lostincriterion.com.